Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Jeff Rowe. I was the community manager, program manager, and board chair for the Octo Project for a little over seven years, from early 2011 until mid-2018. And I want to welcome you all to the Octo Project's 10th anniversary presentation. We have a lot to cover today. First, I'd like to introduce Nico Deschain, or rather, I'd like to let him introduce himself. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Nicolas Deschain. I work at Linaro and I'm the uh, Yocto Project Community Manager. I took this role over Jeffro uh, a little bit more than two years ago, and I'm very happy to be here today to celebrate uh, this very important milestone for the project. Um, we've prepared this special event to show I mean, what our community has been and uh, to talk about I mean, the project and the last, uh, the last decade. I hope you will enjoy the event and I will be back uh, in a few minutes to talk to you about a few more things about the project. Thanks and enjoy. I think it would be best to start out with some words from the founding parents of the Octo Project, Richard Purdy and Dirk Hondel, as well as Dave Stewart, the first engineering manager, and Tracy Irway, the first advocacy manager. Okay, yeah, well, I, I can't believe it's been 10 years since, uh, since the project was established. Um, it seems like just yesterday we were meeting in, um, in San Francisco, um, all these companies sort of pulled together. Um, and I was told that, you know, the idea was kind of crazy, um, but the companies, you know, did, did pull together. They did decide to sort of give the idea a go and, uh, here we are 10 years later, happy birthday of the project. Um, it's been quite a ride. There's been some, what I think some really great changes to the project, um, you know, to, to open embedded, we took something that, uh, was one monolithic repository. We've created the layer model, um, we've created all these different layers different maintainers, we sort of managed to spread the load around, we've made it more stable. There's been some great changes in technology over that time. So um, things like recipe specific sys roots, um, you know, when, where, for build isolation. More recently, there was the, the hash equivalence work. We've made great improvements with our testing and the way we build things on the auto builder. So it's, it's been a great 10 years and um, I'm, I think the thing for me is to see how the, where the project's gone, um, to see it being used in set-top boxes, to, to televisions, to, um, to data centers, all the, you know, the communications sort of um, all behind the scenes, the, the BMCs on servers and data centers. Um, and I think that the crowning thing for me was hearing that we had a, a satellite going around orbiting Mars that uh, was built using the project, so. 10 years, wow. Happy anniversary, Yocto Project, and congratulations to everyone who's been involved here for the last 10 years. What an incredible ride. Who would have thought 10 years ago when some of us came up with this idea and decided to push for a new uh, project in the Linux Foundation to bring together embedded Linux developers across uh, all parts of this industry? Who would have thought how much success this would have? how broadly used it would be, how much a core part of the embedded open source infrastructure, the Okta project would become. I think none of us who were there at the beginning would have believed that this really would have been such success in such a short period of time. I am thrilled to have been part of the creation of the project. I'm thrilled to see the project thrive today and congratulations to everyone involved. You made it possible. I cannot end this video without thanking Richard Purdy for his tireless and critical involvement and, and all the contributions that he's made. Richard, you're my hero. Thank you for all that you've done here and, and keep going strong. Hello, I am David Stewart calling in from my COVID cabin here in beautiful Beaverton, Oregon, calling in on the occasion of the 10th anniversary of the Octo Project, or Yocto Linux, as we originally called it. I was the original engineering manager at Intel who started the Octo Project and hired the original team of engineer, Intel engineers who worked on the project. And we set up teams uh, here in uh, California, Oregon, Romania, China, and a variety of other places. And uh, so starting up the Octo Project is really one of the career highs for me. I'm really so grateful to Intel to have the opportunity and that they let me run it with minimal management oversight. Um, they also gave me 
a great opportunity to set up a Yocto project dev board for Intel called the Minnow Board, an open source, low cost, Intel-based embedded development board. They gave me the opportunity to hire a great team and I'm so grateful to that team. And, and thanks to Intel for also sending me around the world to talk about the project and to work with other people. I'm extremely grateful to Richard Purdy and to Dirk Hondel for trusting me with their baby and so many others that I'm so grateful for. So happy anniversary Yocto project. You're looking good, kid. Happy birthday, Yocto Project. Happy 10th birthday. We are so proud of you. What an amazing project to be part of. What an amazing opportunity to change the world, frankly. Thank you, Dave Stewart, for coming over to my desk and saying, hey, you want to work on something fun? Because it has changed my life. Yocto Project, I have been the advocacy lead and on the advocacy team the whole time. I launched the project and the project has had a ton of firsts. It's been an amazing thing to be part of. We were the first project ever to sponsor a conference. We sponsored ELCE when we decided to launch our 0.9 Yocto project release, Laverne. Bless you, Laverne. And we coined the phrase, advocacy. Nithya Ruff, Lou Ta, Andrea, whose name I can never say, even though I've known her for 10 years. We created that term, and that term is now used to mean to advocate for a project in the industry, and it's used by the Linux Foundation, by corporations, by other projects. Marketing, on the other hand, to us is you as a corporation, as part of a project, you're marketing, you're part of it. But for our project's point of view, we're advocating. We've always been terrifically supportive of women in engineering. We've also uh, been very hardware agnostic. So AMD and TI and Intel all work together on this project and very happily without competing, which is very interesting. Um, we have probably been the longest running sponsor of ELC or ELCE from a project point of view. And we are, it is our flagship event that we go to and it is such a fun event. Both of them are, thank you, Angela. Um, and what we realized by going to all these events, we realized that engineers want to talk to engineers and our engineers have been our biggest advocates for the project. So if you get a chance to go in person to another event, for ELC or ELCE, you look for the crowd around a booth and it will be the Yocto Project booth. These first 10 years of the Yocto Project have been life-changing for many of us and evolutionary for embedded Linux. I'd just like to walk through a brief history of the project with a few words from Yocto Project luminaries along the way. One thing to keep in mind is there's a lot of information here and these slides will be available, so don't feel like you have to read everything immediately. This is an early timeline for the events leading up to the formation of the Yocto project, starting with the Open Embedded project. OE started in 2003, when Chris Larson created the first repo. As I remember the story, much of the idea for OE came from a small ragtag community who wanted to put Linux on a sharp Zorus. After all these years, I don't know whether they ever succeeded, but eventually the build system for this distro was developed based on Gentoo's portage system, and the build system took on a life of its own becoming popular in several communities, including software-defined radio, as well as early open development boards like the Beagle Board. Rather than go over all the details, let's hear from Jason Kreidner, one of the early Yocto Project board members, about his first experience with OE. Hi, I'm Jason Kreidner. Um, I first got involved with um, Open Embedded in the Yocto Project, actually before it was, was Yocto, uh, maybe about 13 years ago when we started this project called Beagle Board. And one of our community members, Philip Ballister, was doing some software-defined radio stuff. Um, and at the time, all we had was some pre-built um, MAMO distribution, um, you know, pre-built binaries kind of up and running. And I was in the process of trying to put Gentoo, um, my favorite Linux distro, uh, on there. And I got um, a message from Philip saying, hey, you know, um, 
uh, this guy named Kun Koi, um, he, in, excuse me for butchering his name, um, you know, he's got this, this build that's, you know, already, you know, optimized for the architecture. You know, Philip said, hey, um, Kun Koi's got this, um, this distro open embedded and you should try it out. Um, and, you know, it was the Angstrom distribution based on the open embedded. And, um, you know, so I, you know, gave it a quick shot and fired off a, an email back and, you know, pointed out a couple issues. And lo and behold, like within just minutes came back another distro build. Um, and I went ahead and it's like, well, that was so fast. I got to go ahead and give this a try, fired it up. And it was so much further along than anything I'd been done. It was already an optimized tool chain and he did it from spec. He didn't even have it. And, and you know, what I saw is just, I was maybe up to about 30 packages built and, and he had hundreds and his efficiency was just so far beyond. So it was like, okay, um, who is this guy and what is this open embedded thing? Um, and kind of the rest came from there, right? So, um, you know, from the open embedded community came the Octo project um, and we were all on board. So um, been a great ride. Um, thanks very much for the Octo project and, and thanks in particular to uh, Kuhn Koi's uh, um, getting us on board. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Jason. So these are some early photos of the open embedded crowd, including a few familiar faces. You will notice, as we all have over the years, a strong preference for beer as a motivating factor to create great software. This next slide shows the formation of the project as an organization. As we move on to the next phase, it's important to recognize Dirk Hondel, who first discussed the project with Richard at a Linux conference in early 2010. That discussion grew into a small team, a partnership with Wind River, and a big meeting in San Francisco in September with the Linux Foundation and a ton of stakeholders all of whom became early stakeholders in the project. The Octo project was born with its first 0.9 release and a big launch at ELCE in Cambridge in October 2010, 10 years ago, with Dirk giving a great talk underneath Concord at the Aviation Museum in Duxford. The next spring, the Octo project advisory board formed at the Collab Summit in San Francisco. Thanks very much to Dave Stewart for some of these photographs. Let's hear from some of the early board members. Greetings from California. My name is Liu Ta. I've been with the Yachta Project from inception until June of this year. I initially served as the treasurer for the project. Then in 2018, I added the advisory board chair to my responsibilities. I believe the reason why Yachta Project has been so successful is due to the involvement from all aspects of the community. How everyone chips in during times of need had always astounded me. Through my time with the project, I've seen how the community adhered to the motto of what's best for Yachta Project. The existence of this sentiment allowed the governing team to have trust in each other and agreed upon charters. The sentiment permeates to the community, resulting in overwhelming support for the project. I've seen how the community jumps in to support the project from financial to setting up booths at conferences to planning Yacht Project summits to running live coding. It's the thankless contributions, the tireless volunteering that built the strong camaraderie in the project. I hope the project will never lose that aspect. Congratulations, Yacht Project, on your 10th year anniversary. Hi, this is Atul Bansal, CEO of Timesys Corporation. I want to wish happy 10th anniversary to the Yakto project. Timesys has been involved with the Yakto project since its inception. When Yakto was introduced, it was promoted as a versatile build system for creating custom version of embedded Linux. Its true value really became apparent as it was adopted by more and more platforms, architectures, and vendors. Currently, almost all semiconductor companies and many SOM and module vendors have adopted Yakto for their Linux PSPs. Having developed an in-house build system for years that is focused on simplicity and minimalistic design, 
time series recognized Yachto's value in its early stages and explored ways in which it could benefit device manufacturers. In fact, Timesys was the first commercial embedded Linux company to join the Yachto project. I still remember the very first meeting we were invited to outside the San Francisco airport back in 2010. I vividly remember having a call with Jim Reddy of Monte Vista and letting him know that Timesys was joining this new project, at which point Jim said, if Timesys is joining, then Monta Vista will join as well. Over the years, Timesys helped companies take advantage of Yachto's hardware agnostic architecture and powerful metal layer capabilities. The Yachto project is helping companies realize ultimate value, shorter time to market for their Linux-based products that are built with Yachto. Once again, happy 10th anniversary to everyone involved with the Yachto project. It's been a great 10 years and here is to the continued success. See you all in 2030. Happy 10th anniversary, Yocto. Uh, this is Nithya Ruff. I'm with Comcast and I was involved in the Yocto project in the early days in 2010, 2011, uh, working with Luta, with Tracy Irway, with Jeffro on the marketing and the advocacy of the project. I think Tracy and I would say we were some of the first people to coin the term advocacy for marketing. And uh, we just loved the early days of the project in getting it off the ground and making it the project that it is today. So what's the fondest memory I have of the Octa project? I would say uh, some of the events like the Embedded Linux Summit in Barcelona, and other events where we got to talk to developers who were using Yocto and working with the community were some of the, the best memories that I have. I'm incredibly proud of the milestone of 10 years, continuing to have a vibrant community, continuing to become a standard in the embedded Linux world. And I look forward to Yocto being uh, all over the world and, you know, even more successful. I'm very proud that uh, my company, Comcast, um, is a contributor to Yocto and we use Yocto in our own devices. And um, it's something that we're very proud to be associated with. So congratulations to the Yocto community and very proud to be involved in Yocto even today. Have a great 10th anniversary, Yocto. Throughout the 2010s, the Octo Project continued to grow and evolve along with its community, always maintaining a close tie with Open Embedded, always with a heartbeat of releases, embedded Linux conferences, and developer days. Let's hear now from one of the developers from that time, my friend Tim Orlin. The Octo Project, happy 10th anniversary. Moto Timo here in my lair with all my gadgets, and I thought I'd take this opportunity to go back to the beginning. And in those days, it was Open Embedded Classic. It was a lot different than what we have now. We didn't have the layers and other things like we have now. Everything was just the kitchen sink all in one place. So fast forward 2014, I had been starting to contribute to Meta Open Embedded. And I had heard about this OEDEM meeting, Open Embedded Developers of America's meeting. So I asked Jeffro, could I come? And he said, yeah, sure, you know, go ahead. Can I bring my dad? Yeah, absolutely, go ahead. So I took the day off of work, brought my dad up in tow to San Jose and walking into this meeting, having no idea what it's gonna be like, who's gonna be there, nothing. And there was 16 people around a table, conference room table. And we basically had this great day just talking about technical stuff and the project and where things were going. And on that day, I along with Paul Eggleton, decided we were going to create MetaPython. And that summer, I took my sabbatical and, and created MetaPython, and the rest is history. Uh, that night, we all went out to dinner, and I was just really so pleased. It just shows what this community is like, that Berlin and Jeff Rowe, you know, hung out and talked with my dad, who has nothing to do with Linux like we do and just made him feel right at home. And that was really special to me. So fast forward to the next year, 
uh, went to OEDAM again. And after the conference, we decided to have uh, some cocktails and realized that Yakto sounded like Mazel Tov to me. So somebody dropped something, broke it behind the bar, and I yelled out, Yakto! Which we kept doing for the rest of the night. It was, it was fun. Uh, we had good times. Thanks, Tim. Here's some more photographs of that time. I remember every single one of these events and every single one of these people. I'm sure you'll all recognize some familiar faces. 2018 brought a host of changes to the project. As chief architect, Richard left Intel to work on the project as a neutral technical leader. Nico took over for me as community manager, and the advisory board reformed with Lou as the chair for almost two years. After spending some time getting its feet underneath it, Yocto is stronger now than ever, with a much larger community, as Nico will show us, a new board chair, Andy Wafa from ARM, hi Andy, and Steve Sackerman has rejoined the project as an LTS maintainer. Many folks from the project have shifted companies, but the project still continues innovating and still has many of its prime developers in place. And of course, the dev days continue now with a two-day summit at the European event starting tomorrow. I'll let Andy talk about the latest iteration of the Yocto project. Hi, I'm Andy Woffer, current chair of the Yocto project. I'd just like to wish all Yoctis a happy 10th anniversary. It's been a phenomenal journey over the last decade, uh, and I think uh, some of the uh, achievements uh, have been far-reaching into the wider open source ecosystem. Uh, the uh, functionality provided by the tooling that Yocto provides uh, has enabled everything from uh, vacuum cleaners to uh, satellites orbiting Mars, uh, which is a great achievement. Uh, and here's to uh, another 10 years of fast-paced innovation uh, and wide-reaching collaboration. Thank you, Andy. That's quite a great group. At this point, I want to hand things off to Nico for a community manager's view of the past, as well as a glimpse into the future. Hey, everyone. Uh, this is Nicola. I'm back with you again today. Um, wow, that was uh, really good to see all these uh, memories from all these people that participated to the project. Uh, many thanks to all of you who sent your uh, pictures and, and video. That's, uh, that was a really good testimony for the project and for our community. So while we're here today to talk uh, mostly and to celebrate mostly about the, the, the first decade, it's also true that uh, this is the beginning of the next decade. And I thought I would give uh, some thoughts about what I think uh, the next decade could be and why I think uh, we are uh, well equipped to uh, start the next decade. And hopefully we'll be able to do uh, as good as what we've done uh, for the last 10 years. So if we look uh, today uh, at what we've built, um, it's obvious that uh, what is uh, the biggest trends of our project is the community we build on the project and the, the, the whole uh, open source ecosystem that we build on the Octo project. So looking at just all numbers, uh, these are the commits and numbers of developers and organizations that actually contributed to the project for the last 10 years. Um, so, I mean, as you can see, I mean, uh, we have uh, close to 2,000 people from almost 200 companies, organizations that have contributed to the project. If you look at the number of commits, and if you do a little bit of math, it is 40 patches that have been merged every single day for the last 10 years. 40 patches every single day for the last 10 years. It is quite a stunning number of contributions for our community. If we look at the mailing list as well, I mean, we've been exchanged 100 email every single day as well. I mean, it's crazy numbers. Uh, if you look at where the contributions are being done, uh, what we can see is that uh, a very well balanced uh, between uh, the core of the project, which is what everybody relies on, uh, the layers which are contributed and maintained by uh, the member company, the company who make up the membership of the project. And then obviously we have a large presence of layers uh, which are maintained by I mean, our community. So uh, it's a very well balanced uh, contributions over the last 10 years. So another way of looking at uh, this ecosystem and our community uh, is to look at, the, at this slide here. What we can see is that uh, the number of contribution is very constant. Uh, I think, I mean, 
most people like to see uh, curves that go exponentially and just rocket to the sky. But I think one trends of the project and of our communities, uh, we are known to be uh, stable and re reliable. So that's basically what we are and, and what we do. We basically build and give you all the bits and, uh, and pieces that you need uh, to build your own customized, optimized Linux system. That's what we do. And that's what we've been doing for the last 10 years. So we've managed to actually upgrade uh, all the recipes and all the content um, to the most recent upstream technologies, Linux technologies. And we've managed to keep that into something we can actually uh, do ourselves. Right? If you look at the number of recipes that we released 10 years ago and the number of recipes we released this month, it's basically very constant. So we are able to keep up uh, with what happens in the Linux um, open source uh, systems and to provide that to, I mean, all, uh, all the developers in our ecosystem. Uh, the graph uh, also that shows that we've been able to attract new developers over time, which is a really good thing for um, our ecosystem. If we look at uh, this graph uh, now, uh, so basically, I mean, uh, we started with, uh, the project started 10 years ago with uh, eight organizations that come to, came together uh, with the Linux Foundation. Uh, today, um, our organization, uh, our membership is made of 25 organizations. So if we look at the uh, overall contributions, the top 25 organizations that contribute to the project, what we see, and which is actually very interesting, is that there is a very good match between the company that make up the membership and the company that contribute to the project. So what, what makes me think that we have a very strong and engaged uh, set of uh, companies and, and that are basically our members. So they not, not only contribute to the project like financially, that's, that's very much needed, but they also contribute to the project by just sending uh, patches and their own engineers. So they might contribute to the core of the project, they might contribute to layers that actually benefit their product, but they basically overall contribute um, to our ecosystem. So um, our membership is uh, stronger than ever. And uh, that's very good, good to see that they are engaged and working continuously with, uh, with everyone in our ecosystem. So are we ready for the next decade? I believe we are. Uh, so a few things happened behind, uh, maybe slightly behind the scenes over the last few years, but um, as most people might know, I mean, the, the Yocto project was the first uh, collaborative project from the Linux Foundation 10 years ago. So the um, structure of the project and the way um, we work together and the way all the members work together uh, needed to be modernized uh, since the Yocto project was set up uh, 10 years ago. Many different, um, many new projects have been managed and started by the Linux Foundation. So we learned from all the, all of them and we've been able to modernize and revisit, I mean, the governing structure of the project. Um, our membership is, as I just said before, is stronger than ever. We move from like eight uh, or initial organization that founded the project to uh, something like a 25 organization today, which makes a stronger and a much better financial situation as well. What has been done uh, lately over the last uh, two years and uh, is that the, the, the establishment of the Yocto project TSC, the Technical Steering Committee and the LTS. I believe uh, the TSC and LTS are going to be the two pillars of uh, the next, uh, the success of the, our success for the next decade. Uh, the TSC is very engaged in driving and defining uh, the technical directions for the project. And the LTS is what many of our users uh, from our ecosystem have been asking for and uh, need actually to, uh, for the product. Um, that's, I mean, the LTS is needed for people who make product. But one thing also, which we hope we are going to see is uh, we are going to see less uh, diversity in what um, our, our users and members are actually using for the product. So more contributions toward like a single LTS should actually drastically help uh, the quality and the maintenance of our releases. What we've done behind the scenes as well uh, is very much improved infrastructure. Uh, we've added a lot of automation testing and that has a lot uh, a lot us to actually be very, very close to upstream projects. So what we do, I mean, every two, twice a year, we make a Yorkta project release and what we give to our community is like the latest and greatest um, upstream uh, software, which has been integrated and tested uh, so they can start, I mean, using into their product. So that's, that's been, that's something we can do today. Thanks to uh, all the improvement we've done uh, in how we actually manage the project behind the scenes. 
last but not least, I mean, the uh, community outreach and advocacy. What I've, I mean, I've been around, I mean, not, not since the beginning, but for the last two years. And what I can see is we are, we are continuously seeing like a lot of new people that just come and join us and just they bring us like a full um, new set of ideas and, and they came with like lots of energy into how they want to contribute and help us basically go and spread the good word about the project. I mean, we have seen new initiatives on uh, social media, on, I mean, on YouTube's and, and I'm sure we are going to see how much more of that in the future. So I'm very happy to see that we are able to attract new people also in this area of the project. That's very important for us. So finally, uh, yes, I mean, everything is well ready for the next decade. And uh, I'm sure you, you want to know how you can come and help us. Uh, that's a question we very often have. Uh, the first thing, I mean, we would like everybody to do is to actually start using and testing the Yocto Project LTS release. Uh, we need more users. Uh, we need everybody uh, to actually converge to the LTS so that we can actually improve the quality of the LTS. We want to hear, we want to get feedback, we want to get bug reports, and obviously we want to get contributions back to the LTS. Um, one thing which obviously would be very important for the project is to see more of the end users and uh, uh, from our ecosystem, maybe the people that we don't know, I mean, the people who make product, I mean, silently without telling us to just come back and contribute to the roadmap. Uh, so basically we need to hear what the use cases are. I mean, so you are probably doing crazy things with the Yocto project that we don't know. So we want to hear that so that we can actually contribute and improve the core of the, of the, of the projects that you can reuse and benefit from that. Uh, we need to hear from bug reports and bug reports is very important for us because this is how we learn about the users and this is how we learn about what the users are doing with the project. And of course, I mean, uh, if you are up for the job, uh, we would welcome you to join our developers community and contribute, I mean, patches and code reviews and anything that's needed, I mean, to just make the Yocto project, I mean, uh, better than ever. We have uh, public uh, meetings, weekly and monthly. The weekly meetings are more like to deal about the day-to-day -day, uh, kind of things and uh, I mean bug, I mean bug triage and uh, uh, deciding the, I mean, what the next release is going to be. And the monthly meeting is more about long-term discussions about uh, roadmap and what the, where the project should go. I mean, obviously, uh, if you are willing to support the project and become a member, that's uh, something which we would obviously uh, be very happy with. And finally, as I said, I mean, something which is very important for us and it's, uh, I mean, our advocacy team, uh, we meet every two weeks and uh, we try to derive, I mean, strategies and actions and how decide about what event we should attend and what, how we should reach out to more people uh, to help us just spread the good things about the Octo project. So we always need more help in this area and you don't need to be a developer to help with this. So, yeah. That's basically what I wanted to share today. Uh, I'm very, very happy to be part of this community, very proud to see what the community has done. Uh, this is like a major milestone for the project. I mean, this 10 years anniversary, and uh, this is the end of the first cycle. This is the beginning of a new cycle. And I'm very happy to say today and to wish, um, to say happy birthday to you, Yocto Project, and to wish you the best for the next decade. Thank you very much. These are some words about the project from our community. These videos and quotes from some of the many people for whom the Yocto project have touched their lives are very important to me. Remember that these slides and videos will be all available afterwards, so don't try to read it all at once. And if you would like to contribute, please let us know. Hi, I'm Darren Hart. I'm the Senior Director of the Open Source Technology Center at VMware. Um, many of you know me from my time working in the Linux kernels, maintainer of the x86 platform drivers, some of the middle board work at Intel, and several years working on the Octo project. Um, there are so many fond memories from working on the Octo project, and it's pretty hard to call one out, but I think perhaps a, um, a, a, a the way that I think of it is just the community that uh, was present this this passion, this excitement that uh, so many of the people participating had. Um, I remember new folks joining and helping them ramp up. I remember the folks that have been around a long time helping me ramp up. Uh, and so many of these dinners around the world and the events that we held together 
but mostly it was just working with other people that were super excited about what they were doing. Um, and that was by far some of my fondest memories of working on the Yako project. Paul Anderson was an early board member from Wind River. Scott Garman was one of the early engineers from Intel. Jeremy Pullman is an engineer from Monta Vista, one of the first companies involved with the Yocto project. Hi, my name is Stefano and I'm a technical program manager at the Linux Foundation. I've been working on the Yocto project for about seven years and there are two things that really stand out to me about the project. Uh, the first one is how well it fits into the open source ecosystem around it. I often describe the Yocto project to folks who are new to it as the Linux from scratch of Embedded. And I think we can stand behind that claim. We've got a great set of engineers supporting and a really in-depth set of documentation. And the other thing is the community uh, of the Yocto project. I, I, when I first joined the project, I was amazed at the friendliness and the eclectic nature of the folks who work on it. And I think that's really unique and it's really impressive. And so I just wanna say happy birthday, Yocto Project. Mike Wooster, of course, is the VP of Business Development with the Linux Foundation. Mike was instrumental in getting the Yocto Project off its feet and into the wide world. And he always likes to give the developers all the credit. Greetings and happy 10th anniversary to the Yocto Project. My name is Chris Hallinan and I've been involved in the embedded Linux community for almost 20 years now. I joined the Yocto Project as a member of the advisory board during my employment at Mentor Graphics. They were one of the largest commercial embedded Linux providers at the time. I was also very active on the Yocto Project advocacy board responsible for marketing and promotional materials for the Yocto Project. As part of that role, I was a frequent contributor to the various venues where the Yocto project exhibited, both as a member of the exhibit staff and a trainer at the various educational events that have proven popular over the years. While I'm no longer an active contributor in the community, I'm still in contact with some of the many friends I made along the way. By far, some of my fondest memories of the Yocto project community are the many friends I've made both here and around the world. Tom Zanussi was another early developer with Intel. Tom was also responsible for the Linux Tiny, the Tiny effort. And uh, Tom was also kind enough to send me the picture of the submarine, the very first Yocto swag, which you'll find in one of the earlier slides, if you look carefully. The Yocto project is certainly successful. If you look at um, projects like AGL, RDK, which are using Yocto project as their baseline, it speaks volumes to that. I would talk about two aspects of the project that I believe are behind its success. First one is customization. So every embedded Linux distribution or embedded systems for that matter is customized. Therefore, you have to build every system differently, unlike any standard distribution. The Octo project tools and techniques provide that baseline where you can effectively customize your systems. And the second reason is its horizontal scale, where you can build a tiny system, which is a IoT um, based system perhaps, and a full server using the same infrastructure. In a real world, your products may consist of many of these different SOCs put together, or it, you could be building different products, including different SOCs from different vendors, different architectures, and therefore building software for such systems becomes quite complex. The Octo project addresses that really well by providing you a, this horizontal scale where you can reuse your build system across your product lines. And this goes along with the nice and welcoming community that the Octo project has. Nicole was one of the first advocacy people on the project, and I still carry one of the very first pieces of swag that she created for us. Brian Avery was an engineer at Intel who was responsible for a large number of things and several people, as I recall. And so many others that I'm so grateful for. I'm sure that if I listed them all out, that I would I'm sure offend somebody by leaving them out. But I'm going to try. 
So thanks from the bottom of my heart to Jeff Osier Mixon, Tracy Irway, Joshua Locke, Ross Burton, Paul Eggleton, Beth Flanagan, Scott Garman, Darren Hart, Nitin Campbell, Saul Wold, Tom Zanussi, Jessica Jong, Stephen Jolly, Song Lu, Paul Anderson, Mark Hatley, Bruce Ashfield, Chris Larson, Kuhn Kui, Kevin Tien, Sean Hudson, John Cherry, Steve Sackerman, Jason Kreidner, Philip Allister, Kamaraj, Dennis, Alex DeVries, Luta, Nithya Ruff, Bill Mills, Jim Zemlin, Belen Penna, Radu, Valentin, Mihai, Laurentio Bogdan, Alex Shane, Renu, John DeGilio, Lynn Comp, Ahmad Susu, Mark Skirtness, Mari Whalen, Michael Halstad, Angela Brown, Mike Worcester, and one more, Scott Reifenbark. So I couldn't do this presentation without a nod in memoriam to our friend Scott Reifenbark, the Octo Project's intrepid technical writer, whom we sadly lost earlier this year to cancer. This is Scott playing in the background, and I thought I'd let some of our folks say a few words. Scott is playing the lead guitar in the background music. Thanks to Christy for the track. Yeah, the, the sad news we got about Scott Reifenbach at the beginning of the year was a huge blow to the project. Scott was a significant, you know, a personality. I, I remember him interviewing, uh, interviewing him to, to work on the project, and uh, he he was definitely a character. He brought sort of an awful lot to that role. I think we were always very surprised because he was hands-on. He wanted not just to document something, but to be able to try it for himself um, because he believed, you know, if he could figure it out, then other people would be able to through the documentation. And just as important to making this project a success has been our documentation that was written by Scott Reifenbark, who we lost and we missed terribly. I originally hired Scott at... Uh... Intel, he was already at Intel and I hired him into the Octo Project to be our first tech writer. He was probably one of the most adult people I think I have ever worked with in my career. Um, no drama, great worker, uh, very disciplined, very open. I loved visiting his uh, house in the woods in Oregon. Um, he was a full-time Intel employee and a part-time defensive coordinator for the Banks High School football team. And for a time while he was working for me, uh, he split the year between Oregon, Belize, and Finland, all while delivering at a very high level in his job at Intel. He told me one time, Dave, I've got an interesting life. I would agree with that, Scott. You had an interesting life. I have a lot of fond memories working with Scott Reifenbark. He was um, just a, a, a great human being. Um, he, incredible stories that I think many of us envied from life experience. Um, as, as a technical writer, I always appreciated Scott's willingness to go ahead and work with the way the systems engineers wanted to work. Um, one time he was talking to me about uh, a, a customer of his at his bar and grill down in Belize. Um, he owned a place down there and uh, he talked about some of his customers uh, who would complain a lot. And he said to me, some people will complain if you hang them with a new rope. <laughs> I have to say that's a phrase that I continue to use to this day. Scott, I miss you friend and I will treasure our time together and consider it to be also a personal high as well as a career high. Uh, one of my fondest memories of Scott was coming to him when I was just getting my, my feet wet trying to be a soccer coach for my young kids and uh, really struggling with some of the interactions with just other parents and the community expectations for this volunteer role. And um, I remember a, a, a lunch with Scott where we talked for probably an hour about this and he he introduced me to the concept of the parent gene. If I was to pick the top five things that made the Octa Project a success, um, the work that Scott did on documentation is definitely within that top five. Uh, incredibly sad that he's no longer around. He's a huge loss, um, but in, I am glad his memory lives on in the form of the documentation. Yeah, he was a great. He was a great guy. I miss him a lot. As we come to the close of this presentation, I wanted to share a great community story from Beth Flanagan, better known as Pidge, and John Hawley about the race of the decade. I know I'm going to have to talk about this because I'm sure John Hawley talked about this. 
Um, let's talk about Blimp and the dog and the race in Edinburgh. The people that are working on on Yocto are some of the, the, the craziest but most interesting people you, you can imagine. And So Tracy Erdway and I decided that we needed a demo. And for some reason, I thought, let's do a blimp. Um, flying things. Flying things are awesome, right? Um, I had started building this little robot dog uh, um, called, you know, a replica of a dog called K9. And um, uh, uh, Pidge was uh, uh, working with an intern on this blimp. What is his name? Kevin. He was the intern at the time. And Kevin, I'm sorry, I forgot your last name. Um, Kevin wrote a lot of that code initially. Um, and he did like this really clever, you know, pure wireless connection, just sending packets back and forth. And that controlled the blimp. And I can control the blimp from my laptop. It was great. For whatever reason, we decided to, to create this ridiculous rivalry. Um, mostly completely faked up internet rivalry. One of the things, if you know us, you you know, part of John's friendship and my friendship is we take the piss out of each other. Uh, uh, where we, we, we trash talk the, you know, I trash talk the blimp and she trash talk the dog. And we kind of had this bet thing going on where, you know, if uh, the blimp won this race, um, I would give her the head of canine. And I don't remember what I was, what I got out of the whole thing. And in order to gin up some interest on this, we were going to talk absolute smack towards each other on Google Plus. Uh, and we supposedly uh, um, uh, uh, agreed on there was only bragging rights for a year uh, um, about whoever won. So months of this go by and, you know, John builds this canine unit and we bring it to Edinburgh and bring the blimp to Edinburgh and, you know, uh, John's canine unit can't turn on carpet because it's a track vehicle. And we're doing this this ridiculous you know staged race between this robot dog that's using tank treads and has four feet of rubberized tank tread and you know barely can move on carpet because the motors aren't big enough and this this blimp that's using a, a helium to stay afloat and and everything and we go to start this race the thing neither kevin or i actually thought about was what what does that look like at a conference when the entire wireless bandwidth goes boom. Pidge was using a point-to-point -point wireless system to control this uh, uh, this blimp. And of course, everybody pulls their phone out to take video or take some, some, some pictures. And of course, all of these devices all suddenly decide to connect to the Wi-Fi. And of course, the entire 2.4 gigahertz spectrum just becomes this cacophony of noise and the the point-to-point -point wireless that was being used by Pidge um, just just failed it, it dropped off because there, there was no way to get the signal through one of the other interesting things about Edinburgh is we didn't think about that wireless thing so every now and then you know the the hall would be empty and people would show up and then more people would show up and then the wireless connection would drop and the balloon would veer into crowds of people which was never a good um, and the, the, the air conditioning or the heating system, because this is in um, uh, uh, like in October, is on. And, you know, the, these big, massive conference grade or conference center grade uh, uh, air vents are blowing air everywhere. And this thing's lighter than air. So it's getting like blown all over the place. And this blimp was basically like just randomly careening out of control. Um, so he's lucky that this race was not a in the circle race or else he would have lost. So yeah, unsurprisingly, the the dog because it, it, it weighed ten thousand pounds or something, um, you know, was able to get to the one end of the the course and come back. And then it it, it was such a lark that uh, we ended up tying like a string around the the dog's neck and had it drag the uh, the blimp around a little bit. I still maintain that he did lose because you know while he did get from point A to point B, I flew, and flying's a lot harder. And so this blimp. You know, we're, we're trying to have this race, and this blimp is, like, careening off in, in, in all kinds of random directions. You know, and I still maintain that I won that because, you know, well, while I did not get from point A to point B, my project didn't burn to the ground, unlike someone's project. <laughs> Sorry, John, your project burned. You lost. The reality is, is I'm never going to let this go, so I'm going to brag about it forever. 
Thank you to everyone who contributed to this walk down memory lane. Keep an eye out on the ACO Project website for photos and memories of the last 10 years and keep contributing and participating. Everyone stay safe and we hope to see you all soon.